In this Power World video, I will assist new and early players on which are the best early pals to get in this game. This list contains 6 which will no doubt help you get started and progress on with your journey into Power World. How's it going guys? My name is DPG and if you do enjoy the video, leave a like, it really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. So what are the best first powers you can get within Power World? Well today guys, I will assist you with what in my opinion are the very first ones you should be getting, then moving on to early game mounts, both ground and air, and then on to an easy to take down world boss who is super powerful, which I have noticed most people skipping by. So let's go guys. Now if you have watched any of my other Power World videos, you may have seen me talk about this pal. It's called the Cat Tiva, and this in my opinion, I'd 100% recommend you catch him before even starting the tutorials. This little dude with his work suitability traits help you farm, gather berries, collect stone, help you craft, gather and transfer other materials, I mean he's one handy little dude. And it's why I recommend you tame in one of these, catch one of these before even starting on your base. Meaning then you can continue on with your grind while this dude works for you. As you level up your base too, you can go ahead and catch more and apply them to that early game base power roll. So these will, like I said, mine stone for you, collect berries, help you craft and also transport gear at the same time. And these are more or less right near the very start of the game. So from when you spawn in guys, you can turn around and head down these steps and there will be a few here. There's also a couple of chests here too, which if you open them, you should be guaranteed a couple of spheres for you to actually catch these little dudes. So obviously you want to take the health down to a low and chuck one of these at them and hopefully, fingers crossed, you catch one. There are also many many more of these little dudes within the opening area uh, so from when you spawn in instead of going backwards go forwards you'll come to a fast travel point if you go down the hill there's loads of these little dudes there now there's also other pals the sheepy looking ones chicken looking ones you want to catch the cativas trust me on that these are 100 in my opinion the best to help you build that first base Okay, so next up guys, I recommend you looking for a PAL companion who gets to work on that battlefield. PALs who are great in that fight, but at the same time, PALs who are easy to catch. Here I recommend you come in and gain two PALs. The first one that comes to mind for me is this game's very own Pikachu. It's called the Spark It and it's a little yellow electric type PAL who once you start upgrading, this little dude is capable of some serious damage output. So on screen now guys, you can see the locations on that map of where these actually spawn in. I mean, they're a little trek from the starting points, but I mean, if you just run over here, there's nothing in your way, you'll find these, just capture them, and you are good to go. But yes, this is definitely one you want to get for sure. The next pal I recommend you get in, and this can be done real early on too, is called the Daydream. Now this is a dark type pal. And it's another one that once you start leveling up becomes a great battle companion. And within the early stages of the game, this one's probably the better one to get, the easier one to get, as this one doesn't require you to trek anywhere. The only difference is these mostly only appear at night time, and it's where I caught mine. But within the first area where you initially spawn in, these can be very, very apparent. So yes guys, when it comes to that night time, make sure guys you get one of these dudes. Grab this and grab that Sparky, two little battle beasts you can't live without early on. So now guys, we're going to move on to the mounts. So there are many grand mounts that are great at traveling in and around that map. But real early on guys, you are limited to a few because of your level. And then you want to obviously craft that saddle. Some of the bigger and better mounts in the game require some materials that you won't get early on. So yes, for now, we're going to concentrate on the smaller grand mounts, but at the same time, they're still quite good and they still have many, many benefits to them. Now for me, I truly recommend to you the Russia, which you will come across quite often. The thing about this little dude is, it's also way easier to catch than other grand mounts of the same level. 
So for early players, I do recommend this one. Plus the added bonus of its saddle being real easy to craft, which you unlock at around level 6, I do believe. So it's literally right at the start of the game. So the location of where you can find this little grand mount, uh, you can see on screen now. You want to come here, guys, and definitely get one of these dudes. Now, keep in mind, they are aggressive little bastards, so they'll actually start and pick a fight with you without you even doing anything to them. So be prepared. Now, there are a couple of other grand mounts you'll see early on, which are even better, but they do require you to put a bit more effort into capturing them. Plus, the saddles require uh, materials that are slightly harder to get. Now the two that come to mind which you can find real early on are the Malpaca uh, which is also great as well as the Eat Fido I believe that's pronounced. These are two amazing grand mounts but again like I said in regards to crafting their saddles higher levels may be required as well as better materials. Okay, so next up guys, we have a world boss who is really easy to take down if you are around that level of 10. This pal is called the Chilit and can be found right here on the map. So this world boss does spawn in at around the level 11. And to be honest, it's quite easy to take out. I came here with my bow and arrow, I pulled it out and realized it was damaged. So I just pulled out my spark and he did all the work for me. He got it down to a low half, I then just simply threw my sphere at it and caught it straight away. And I was like, really? Was it that simple? Now these world bosses will respawn back in by the way. So if you want to catch multiple of them, or if you accidentally kill it the first time, it will respawn. Now this is a power you can also build a saddle for. And when it comes to riding this thing, it is super powerful considering how easy it is to catch. I mean, at the stage of me capturing this, it was way more powerful than any other power I had. And it wasn't even a question. So yes, guys, come and catch this world boss pal. You don't want to miss it. So lastly, guys, we have the first fly man you will come across. Now it's called the Nightwing. Now I won't lie to you guys, although this is early game, to actually be able to fly and mount this thing, uh, you need to reach a level 15 because that's when you unlock this thing's saddle. I mean the pallet itself you can more or less catch at any time you reach around the level of 7 upwards, uh, at the lowest I'd say actually because the lowest of this pal I've seen is like a 9, so anything in regards to your own level being much lower than that, it really ain't worth your time. Now these flyers completely change this game, once you get one and you're able to mount it, I mean you can go anywhere. Now in regards to this one and capturing it, I'll give you a few tips and tricks. Now this is a flyer, as you can see, but it does land, it does charge, and it also throws out tornadoes, shoots blasts at you, it really ain't an easy catch. Now personally, if I were you, I'd explore the first part of this area, look for those Lithmonk effigies, which are the glowing green statues, which are really easy to see at night by the way. Use these at that statue of power, which you unlock at a level 6, build that within your base, and use these effigies to upgrade your player stats, capture power. This will make capturing these bigger and stronger creatures a little easier. Another thing you can do and use to help you catch uh, bigger and stronger powers is use a poison bow and arrow, this will make taming and capturing powers a little easier, although I can't be exact on percentages because it doesn't state that. Now keep in mind if you plan to use the poison bow and arrow, uh, you do need to craft the poison arrows, which require poison glands to craft these, which are easily obtainable for killing most small uh, dark powers which appear at night time. So take them out, collect these poison glands and craft what you gotta craft guys. So once you are ready people, you need to locate one of these flyers. Again, they ain't guaranteed to spawn in within said locations, but using this on screen now from my uh, PAL deck, you'll see where these can be. So once you have one in your sights, I'd recommend using a PAL to take it down to probably about a third of its health. Then withdraw that PAL and do the rest yourself. You don't want your PAL accidentally killing it, which has happened to me. So if you have those poison arrows, use them, but do not spam them as they do tick damage as you do know. So make sure you don't fire one of these when it's on really low health as it can kill it after that initial hit. So when its health is low and it's still poisoned, here's your chance and fingers crossed, throw that sphere at it. As you can see on screen now, mine had a 40% capture percentage upon me hitting it with that sphere, but I caught it straight away. Hopefully you get this lucky. 
So once you have captured these guys, you now have to build that saddle. So go back to your base. From here, if you haven't already, you now need to build that PAL gear workbench. This is where you craft those PAL saddles. So once you are at a level 15, unlock the Nightwing saddle. Then head to that PAL gear workbench and craft the shit out of these people. It requires a leather, which is obtained from many of the PALs you just kill and farm their bodies. It requires cloth, which you have to craft at the workbench, which requires wool, which you get from those sheep looking dudes, the lamb bells, ingots, which come from aura and fiber, which comes from trees, and then the powder and fragments, which you get from rocks. Which, by the way, if you have a Cattiva pal, which I mentioned at the start of the video, and you make it your base pal, and the rocks within the vicinity of your base, it gets quite a lot of these. But yes, once you are up in the air guys, it is a true game changer in regards to traveling across the map, finding all kinds of different things. Yes, I do truly recommend you working as quick as you can to get in a flying mount. It's just unbelievable. But there we have it guys, the best early game powers I do recommend you invest in your time in to get. If there's anything else you'd recommend new players getting, leave a comment down below. But on that note guys, the end of the video has arrived. If you enjoyed it, leaving a like really helps out. If you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe and hopefully guys, I will see you on that next one.